day another real world test today we're doing it on the apple iphone 14 and right now we're kind of in that weird period between christmas and new year's where like nobody knows what to do with themselves and uh, you know time doesn't exist it's also cold and a little gray out at the moment so i'm kind of just in the mood for like some comfort food so we, we might as per the usual explore while we test out this phone but do some more foodie ish things maybe check out some restaurants if that's okay with you guys but of course, before we do any of that, first things first. The first time I heard about this place and came here was because of my friend, another YouTuber that you might know, David Amell. He actually works for MKBHD now. Now during when outdoor seating was the only thing allowed here in New York City in the summer of 2020, and this place had just opened in spring of that same year, we were both trying to find new coffee shops to work from because we were kind of losing our minds from doing it all at home by that point, and he happened to stumble upon this one. Now it's a Japanese cafe in a lunch spot that serves proper bento boxes, and it's just beautifully designed and very clean, like minimalistic, mixed with nature, just very Japanese in my mind. Now today I'm here not just to get coffee, but also a Japanese egg sando, which I've yet to try. Can't confirm, so good. There's like dill in it, it's on a brioche bun. I actually don't really like lettuce in my egg sandwiches, but for some reason, I like it here. It just adds like a bit of crunch. It's great. Now, while we're here though, let's talk about the iPhone 14. Now on the face of it, this feels very much like an incremental upgrade to the iPhone 13. They have the same SOC, the A15 Bionic. You only get the A16 this year if you go for the Pro models. And honestly, you'd have a hard time noticing a difference. Now there is one slight change, and that's that the A15 this year in these phones has one extra GPU core compared to the A15 in the iPhone 13 series. Again, you won't notice that, but that's the difference. As far as the display is concerned, we have an 800 nits max brightness and 1200 for HDR. That is the same as last year. And also the same as last year, that peak brightness only hits whenever you're in direct sunlight. And for both this year and last year, the screen is plenty bright for me to see outside in direct sunlight. So that's all I care about. Now that screen is also a 60 hertz panel compared to the 120 hertz of the Pro models. But again, that's the same as last year. One of the differences for the lineup, at least, is that there is now a Plus model which is the same screen size as the Pro Max and has the same specs as this phone, which is the same size screen-wise as the Pro. Now, essentially, that Plus now replaces the Mini, which they are apparently no longer going to be selling. Instead of a smaller version of this phone, they now have a larger version. But it all kind of makes sense to me as you have these two models with these same screen sizes now as the higher-end Pro models. Now, another difference you'll notice between this and the Pro models this year, at least when looking at the front, is that we have the notch, which we're very used to at this point. But the Pro models have the dynamic island which is basically a cutout that Apple has made some clever UI changes around to just better integrate it into the phone. Now, I've said this in my real tests of both of the Pro models that it has actually grown on me and I do like it, but I wouldn't say that it's a feature worth upgrading to a Pro model for on its own, obviously. Now, the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus come in blue, purple, midnight, starlight, and product red. Last year's 13, there was a pink and a green, but there was no purple. So that's kind of the new color for this year. And if you wanna keep your iPhone 14 looking new, regardless of the color you chose, we should talk about today's sponsor, Rhino Shield. Now, Rhino Shield is known for making super protective and customizable cases and accessories. From MagSafe cases with magnets that are twice as strong as Apple's to their solid suit, no fuss cases. They also have modular Mod NX cases for iPhones, which allow you to mix and match a backplate with various case rim colors and even screen protectors to pair with them all for 360 degree protection. They also have a ton of exclusive cases from NASA, PewDiePie, League of Legends, and a ton of others. And you can even design your own case with your own images and text. They have cases for all of the new iPhones, as well as many flagship Android phones as 
as well. And they also ship worldwide with free shipping for qualified orders, as well as a lifetime warranty on their cases. And lastly, they have a new product called the Grip, which you can attach to the back of your phone, either with MagSafe for iPhones or a super strong reusable adhesive for the Pixel or other Android phones that can be used to prop up the phone in various ways, as well as used to hold it by when you slide it open. If you have the link in the description below and use discount code UNLOCKER, you can get an extra 20% off for the first week after this video goes live and 10% off after that. Thanks again to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Now there's a famous pizza restaurant in this neighborhood called Polly G's that serves what I would call like gourmet pizza. It's the smaller charcoal oven personal pizzas with like creative toppings and ingredients. It, it's fancier pizza. But around the corner from there is this, Polly G's Slice Shop, which in spite of having the same name, serves a very different type of pizza. It's what you would normally think of when you think of a New York slice. It's large, it's thin, it's greasy. And the vibe of the spot is purposely dinery to match. Old movies playing on the TV, baseball and old advertisement paraphernalia on the walls, etc. I mean, sometimes I want fancy. Sometimes I want to pour grease out of a small roni cup. But while we're here, let's talk about the cameras on the iPhone 14. Now on paper, we have very similar cameras. We have the same ultra wide camera with a 13 millimeter equivalent field of view and an F 2.4 aperture. But in addition to that, we have a new main camera that is a 12 megapixel, 26 millimeter field of view equivalent F 1.5 aperture, as opposed to F 1.6, so slightly faster, but the sensor is bigger and Apple is claiming a 49% better low light performance versus the iPhone 13. We got 1.9 micron size pixels versus the 1.7 on the 13. And maybe there's a little bit of a difference, but it's not huge, if we're honest. Something interesting just to note about the main camera, if you get the Pro models, the field of view is actually slightly wider at 24 millimeter equivalent instead of 26. But that has a lot to do with the fact that that is a completely different sensor, where I have a lot more information about it in the link below for my iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max videos if you want to check those out. And unlike the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, we only have two cameras. There is no telephoto camera like we have on those, which is a three times optical. And honestly, one of the biggest things I always miss when I go from the Pro models to the regular ones. In addition to that, Apple also has something called a photonic engine that they claim makes for better low light performance. Essentially what it does is it allows the system to process the images much further down in the pipeline. So when they're raw, as opposed to when they've been converted to RGB. Long story short, Apple is claiming two times better performance on the iPhone 14 and the 14 Plus and three times better on the Pros. But again, I mean, I'll let you guys be the judge as there's plenty of photos in this video to see. Now on the other side though, the selfie camera is a new one. It's a 12 megapixel F 1.9 aperture, so it lets in more light. It also has autofocus, which the iPhone 13 does not have on the selfie camera. And actually I have to say the selfie camera seems like it has the biggest difference compared to last year. Okay, for our last stop of the day, uh, we're going to a restaurant that I actually have been wanting to go to for a while, but just haven't been able to get reservations. But last night, I happened to look and there were some for tonight. So grab that and I'm actually going to meet a friend of mine who I haven't seen in a while and uh, catch up with her. This is Nurem, and like I said, I've been wanting to come here for a while. It opened in October of 2021 and is inside a converted auto body shop that the team here apparently spent 18 months redesigning before they finally opened. And firstly, it's just an impressive space. Now it's supposed to feature cuisines from around the world, even though it leans a bit Mediterranean, I would say, and even apparently has a tandoori oven installed in the back, which is responsible for this non bread, which is just so good. And it comes in their must get breads and dips appetizer. Everything, including these carrot turmeric dumplings, who knew that was a thing, are so good. Now, while we're here though, let's chat about the key software features that are different from the iPhone 
13 to the iPhone 14. Okay, firstly, Apple showed off crash detection, which essentially just uses sensors within the device to determine whenever you've had an accident and will automatically call the authorities for you after a certain period of time if you don't respond. Now, the feature is available in all of the iPhone 14 models, as well as all of the new Apple Watches. Next, we have satellite connectivity for emergency SOS, which basically just means that if you don't have signal, you can access a satellite nearby and use that to send very basic messages to the authorities to get you help as mentioned. Now, also, according to some sources, the phone is easier to repair, apparently, as the back glass is now fully removable and simply secured by two screws. And lastly, the thing that bothers me, but probably because I switch phones all the time for work, as you guys know, is the fact that we don't have any SIM card trays anymore. So that means any of the iPhone 14 models that you buy, at least in the United States, will only take eSIM or electronic SIM. Now that just means that during the setup process, you have to download a SIM from one of the carriers or get a QR code from them or get it some other way digitally. And honestly, for the most part, besides the few hiccups that we had in the beginning when this was first launched, those are mostly fixed, it's fine. The bigger issue though, is when you want to just take your SIM card out and put it into another phone you can no longer do that. You actually have to go buy a new SIM card if you wanna switch from the iPhone back to any other phone with a SIM card tray. And now this problem is probably not gonna bother most of you. But the thing that might bother some of you is when you travel, normally you would just grab another SIM card in the country that you were traveling to and pop that in the phone and you can get much cheaper service over there compared to roaming on your phone's actual carrier. Now there are solutions to this though, where you can actually download apps that give you eSIMs like Aerolo that you can then download to the phone based on the country, but there's a lot less choices than if you just had a regular SIM card. And also some countries and some carriers just don't have any eSIMs yet. They're just not that prevalent yet. So it'll cause a bit of issues while traveling potentially in the short term, but over enough period of time, obviously this will become more and more prevalent and then there won't be any issues. I'm Adam. <laughs> Hello. David, you got it. Okay. Calling it a night. Now, first, the battery. It is 11.50 p.m. and it is at 4% after I took it off of the charger at about 9 a.m. this morning. Here's my battery usage in my screen on time for anyone who's curious about that. Now, keep in mind, as per the usual, that this is not a normal day. It's a real world test. I filmed a lot with the phone, took a lot of photos, etc., etc., etc. But here is another day that was not a real world test, so you have something to compare it to. Okay, as for a conclusion, I mean, it's the base iPhone and as such, it is solid. It's what you expect from the base iPhone. The battery life is meh, it's okay. Uh, one thing I will say along those lines is if you don't mind having a bigger phone, I personally think the extra $100 to get the plus model, the battery life on that was amazing. So I'll leave a link actually to my iPhone 14 plus real world test that I did if you wanna Check that out a bit further, but I think that might be worth it for an extra $100, again, if you don't mind the larger phone. But there you go. You guys let me know what you think of this phone, of this video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments below. Also, this is a very foodie-centric video, obviously, this time. What do you guys think about that? I used to do more of those back in the day. Do we like them? Should I do more of those? Less of those? You tell me. But if you like this video, go check out the rest of the Real World Test series. I'll leave a link below to that where we go explore other places with other pieces of tech. And subscribe if you're not already and please ding the bell so you can notify when I do new videos. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't tell you anything. It's just the way that it works. And lastly, shout out again to Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. You can check them out at the link below. But it has been a long day. I'm still cold. I'm just gonna get under the covers and go to sleep. So, good night.